Do you guys hear that? It says I'm about to record. Um, so let's kick it off, guys. Uh, let's open up the floor right now. Let's talk about, you know, we got some wins, right? Let's talk about what's going on in your business. What's, you know, what's an area you want to improve on? What's something you want to learn? Let's get the discussion going. Um, if you guys don't have anything, I have a couple topics that I can kind of start, but I want to hear from you guys. Like what's, what's the, the thing right now that you're wanting to work on? I think for me, it's like listings. Like I want to be able to uh, get in front of more sellers and create more listing opportunities uh, for my business. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, Jose and Jordan, I know you guys both got some listings that you guys are working on. How'd you guys get those listings? Um, so for me, uh, yeah, we currently have, well, a few, I have a few listings, but two that we're working on right now, um, one in Daly City, and that one was from my sphere. Um, it's a, a friend of mine that I went to high school with, you know, and I graduated high school about 30 years ago, 1993. So it's just someone that through Facebook and then Instagram just kept in touch. Um, and he's someone that's been talking about, it's, it's a family home. Um, and I've been kind of following up with him for about at least a good three years that he's been talking about his family wanting to sell this home. So it's been about me just keeping in touch with him. Hey, how's it going? Um, you know, happy Father's Day or commenting on his posts on Instagram or uh, Facebook. Um, and then the other one is a, a listing we're working on in Oakland where that's a, a it's, it's a referral, um, but that came from uh, my wife. She actually, she works with me in, in the business. So one of her best friends from school um, her, one of her best friends, girlfriends is from Southern California, like the, um, and she knows someone in Fresno that had parents that are wanting to sell their home here in Oakland. So she recommended to them, you know, they had an agent down in Fresno. So they recommended these people to us up here in, um, uh, in Oakland. So that was pretty much a, from a, a referral on that one. Got it. Got it. So, so both of them pretty much originated from your sphere somehow, right? Yeah, those two originated from, from our sphere. Um, and another upcoming one we have in, uh, in the city of Hercules, that was actually from uh, probably yeah, three and a half years ago. And that was from uh, Op City. Um, I, used to, I used to get Op City leads. Um, and he was someone that back then um, was looking to buy a piece of, a piece of land to build a home. Um, and I went and showed him, you know, empty lots in Walnut Creek. And then he wanted to go to Elk Grove. So that was someone that I, I same thing I've been, um, touching on and checking up on him and, um, throughout the years. And so now he is, um, we're listing, it's a rental home they have in Hercules. Um, then he also has, uh, his primary home that he lives in, in South San Francisco that he may want to sell soon. And then they're looking to buy a new build out in um, Elk Grove right now. So we're helping with that as well. So, um, so that one was strictly, you know, from like a cold lead that I mm -hmm. just have just kind of tried nur um, nurturing over. Yeah. I mean, probably four years now going on four years wow. since I first made contact with him. So um, that's how we've, you know, been able to, to get some of these listings we have now. So it wasn't, at least for us, it's never really been, um, I don't you know my strong suit isn't too much on the phones and cold calling and getting, you know, the, the lead that way. Um, it's been more of just nurturing and kind of listening to what people really want. Um, and, you know, maybe I should be a little bit more, more aggressive to kind of push the envelope a little bit, but um, I feel that meeting them at where at the speed that they want to go at is, has kind of uh, helped us in our business. Yeah. Excellent, man. Thanks for sharing that. And I think there's a lot of points that, that we can take from what you just shared, right? Is, is number one is with listings, it's really a relationship that you're building over time. Because when people are going to sell their home, they're not just going to one day wake up and say, oh, let's sell tomorrow. Like it's usually a long thought out process of, hey, we eventually want to move here. Or it's something that's an idea will pop in their head. And that idea has to build and manifest over time. And then eventually they pull the trigger to sell versus a buyer when they're like, all right, we're ready to buy a home. We got our down payment. They go start clicking on Zillow and start all this stuff. And next thing you know, they're looking at homes next weekend, right? So 
Um, I think that's just the important thing for us to understand that with listings, it is more of a longer term uh, relationship, uh, relationship uh, that you got to build over time. Now, that being said, right, is, is there are, you know, websites like OpCity or any of these other ones where you can get leads, right, where you can get people to raise their hand and say, hey, I'm thinking about selling or, you know, what's my home value? Um, so I think from, if you want to get more listings, we kind of got to look at those different areas. So number one is the sphere is I would really just focus on staying in touch with your sphere. Social media is extremely powerful because it's, it's a passive way of staying top of mind, right? You're not necessarily sending something directly to someone you're posting and you're putting yourself out there and, and in their mind, they're seeing you as the, the expert or the agent, um, and also just reaching out, like, can we reach out directly to our friends and family and just say, hey, you know, I'm looking to help out some more sellers this year. Who do you know? That's, that's something else we can do. Um, so I would say you have like more of the branding yourself amongst your sphere. That's going to be a way where you're going to just get those opportunities if you're doing that consistently. And then you have like a whole nother list of like how you want to go after listings, whether it's, you know, purchasing leads online or. Uh, door knocking or cold calling or calling expireds or FISBOs or anything like that. Um, those are ways to go after people who are like in the process right now, right? A for sale by owner is someone who is trying to sell right now. Um, those are just a little harder, I would say, because you got a thousand agents calling them, right? Um, I think my philosophy is I think you should do both. I think you should spend some time during your week going after those immediate opportunities, you know, and if you're good on the phones or you're good at connecting with people and showing immediate value, you can pick up, you know, some expired listings, some for sale by owners um, and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, you should be branding yourself and marketing yourself and staying in touch with your friends and family so that when the time is right and when they're thinking of selling, they consider you. Any questions on, on any of that stuff right there? I have a question for Jose. Um, Jose, so the one that you got from Op City, you know, is four years ago. So what system do you have in place to, to stay in touch or to keep in contact with, with your past leads? Um, now, I mean, I have a, a CRM through our company. Um, we've been with them for about a year now with Compass. Uh, but prior to that, I... I don't really, it's been, you know, on paper and kind of, which is a, a bad thing, right? Because they they teach us in pretty much in every real estate training is you got to get a CRM and, but it's been a lot of from, I guess, from memory, from um, maybe not having as many leads and just kind of concentrate on those few that I have had over the years. Um, but we're definitely, definitely working on a more, um, you know, like now we have a CRM where we put people in and it kind of prompts us to email and that kind of thing. So, um, uh, but I am looking into, um, we just redid our website with uh, luxury presence and trying to find a, uh, a CRM that, that will work with it. So we're looking at, um, I think it's follow up boss that we're going to look at maybe paying for that and getting that to help us better with, with the follow up system. But um, yeah, I, I feel a little bit, uh, kind of ashamed to say that it hasn't been, I haven't had this system where, where it, you know, it automatically sends an email or a text message and that kind of thing. It's been a lot of, um, kind of like from, you know, on, on paper, having my notes, I go, okay, I got to follow up with this person again. So it's been kind of a, an older, older way of following up. Yeah. And I think Jose, I think a lot of people, they start off, they, that's how they're doing it. Right. They either put it in their calendar on their phone or they have it like on, on a piece of paper. So yeah, the next, definitely the next level is getting, getting that system to follow up for you. So yeah, nice. definitely. And guys, what I, what I want to add to that is even having a notepad and you write stuff down, that's a system, right? Like whether it's an efficient system or not, that's a different, that's a different story. Right. But um, don't think that you need this like robust, crazy system you know, to do that. I know agents that really produce at a high level that they don't have a CRM. They might have a spreadsheet, like an Excel spreadsheet 
and they just put all their clients in there and they have them at least somewhere where they can look at them every single day. So at the very basic level, just having somewhere that you can write your stuff down and you know, you're not going to lose it. Um, I would push you away from paper because papers get lost all the time. Notepads get lost all the time. You might leave it at home and you're at the office and, and stuff like that. But if you can, you know, even just build out a spread, a basic spreadsheet with, you know, the name, if it's a buyer or seller, and then like one section to put notes and you open that thing up every single day at the basic level, that system will work, you know? Now, when you start adding the CRMs that do e email campaigns and text messages, you know, and stuff like, like we have, yeah, that's going to make you more efficient. It's going to do some of the work for you. But um, this game, guys, it's, it's really all about just consistency. You know, it's just about, are you calling those people every so often, whether you're calling them, whether your CRM sending something for you, are you in front of them so that when the time is right, they think of you? I think that's, that's the main idea here. Um, Jordan, tell me about your listing, bro, your, or any listings you got right now and how you got them, or if you have any other ways you're to get listings. Yeah. So this listing was uh, sphere followed up, uh, over a year. It was a little bit complicated, kind of a long story, but basically, um, you know, we lost our mom a few years ago and they lost their mom as we kind of bonded over that. that we grew up with. Um, and it was tough because there was siblings that are about 10 years apart in age that were kind of fighting over what to do with the property. And the sister, who was also going to be a buyer, wanted to sell. The son wanted to kind of take it over and make it his house. And so that they were kind of going back and forth on that. And so obviously it's very sensitive. So I just continued to provide value, continued to stay in touch. And then there came a point where, you know, I think the sister was kind of giving up. And then I, I, uh, I took the brother to lunch and I just said hey this is sensitive this is the house you grew up in you know the mom actually passed away in the home like it's it's very obviously emotional so I said totally understand that let me give you a few different scenarios I said there here's one you guys can fix the house up you can sell it or I mean you can rent it uh, through a property manager you can rent it privately this is what that would look like this is what that would look like or you could sell it basically he's a young guy getting started in his career I'm like look bro this is a gift from your parents. You managing the property is going to continue to provide strife between you and your sister. And this way you each walk away with a quarter million dollars. I would say that's a good option. So I, I just laid out all the options and didn't, you know, was impartial as I could be because they're genuinely my friends. I just wanted them to be happy, but I could tell that fighting over the home was causing a problem for them as, as siblings. And so I think it finally hit him like, okay, I don't want to fight with my sister anymore. And I'm about to clear a quarter million. <laughs> like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's where we went. So it's just being patient and trying to be impartial and continuing to provide value, not having mission breath, but really just like it's a win win across the board. Those are the best deals when it's the best scenario for everyone involved, the best deals. So, anyway. Awesome, man. I love that. Um, the internet got a little shaky for me at the end, but I think what he said was uh, just being patient and continuing to provide value and not having a commission breath. You got to throw a tic-tac in your mouth. <laughs> uh, but that's true, right? Like Jason and I have a client like that right now where it's the same situation. Parents died and there's four siblings and, you know, one, two of them want to keep the house and two of them want to just sell it. And, you know, there's 1.8 million in equity in the property. You know, um, and we signed the listing agreement and we we're supposed to start this listing and now they're pulling back again. Right. And they, they've done this back and forth a couple of times and, you know, before signing and then we finally signed and then now they're like, hey, you know, we don't know. And like they're not all on the same page. So for us, it's like it's it's one of our, our close friends. So it's like eventually they have to sell. Like it just doesn't make sense to keep the property. Um, and it is probably going to cause, you know, some anguish between the, the siblings. But like Jordan was saying is you just got to be patient um, with those types of situations. And you got you have to detach yourself from the outcome. Even though we all want to sale, we all want to list team, we all want to close this deal. But we have to like put ourselves to the, our, our agenda to the side and just say like, hey, what's best for the client? Right. Like what's the best advice I can give them if they were my brother, my cousin, my sister? 
And like, I really like how Jordan said like, hey man, you know, let me just give you your options. You know, this is what this would look like. This is what this would look like. This is what that would look like. Which one do you think is gonna make more sense, you know, financially and also yeah. for the relationship with your sister? And it's a difficult balance because you always want to be aggressive, right? And you always want to be assertive, but at the same time, um, reputation matters. And especially if it's someone in your sphere who you're going to see on a regular basis, who you have a lot of mutual friends on social media with, I think that that's where the patients come in. I think you can be maybe a little bit more aggressive with strangers, with new leads, and more you know patient with uh, your sphere um, because you want them to really say that, like, you know what, they, they're patient, they took their time. And, and if you actually care, sh show that, you know, because there's a lot of people that don't. So uh, I didn't necessarily come from a sales background. So I kind of struggled with that in the beginning, closing and negotiating wasn't comfortable. But when I realized that if I don't close, then they might work with someone who doesn't have the same ethics as I do, then I got a lot more aggressive. And so I'm a lot more aggressive now with the people that I care about. But in that I'm aggressive internally, but externally, I look patient and thoughtful and I'm providing value. I like that, man. That's, that's some, some great, great nuggets there guys. Cause you know, as you graduate in, in your career, it's almost like there's like an, a maturity that happens in, in how you conduct yourself and how you conduct business, you know, and how you speak to people and the best, I, in my opinion, the, the best sales are going to be when the client feels like you're more of an advisor or a consultant versus just someone trying to sell them something or trying to close them on something. So I really like how Jordan uh, took that more consultative approach, right? Like, hey, let's just go over your options. Let me lay these out for you. And now you think about it and you think, you know, you let me know which one is the best scenario for you. I can help you out with either one, you know, but let's do what's best for you and your family. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, if I, if I can add real quick, um, you know, I have had situations with, you know, at a listing appointment where I've almost even talked myself out of a listing, you know, for saying, wow, you know, this is a great home. Like, why don't you guys rent it out? Or why would you want to sell it? Like, it's so beautiful. So um, I know what, what Jordan says, like, you know, you, you still want to give them all the options. Right. But I felt sometimes that I've been bordering on that. Like, why am I saying this? Do I not want to help, you know, like go the route of help them sell it. But um, I think it's, it's the best way because you come across a lot more genuine, right? You're genuine. They know that you're there to help and you're not there just for, for a commission or the, the sale and that kind of thing. So. Yeah. That that's one of the best questions you can ask, actually ask a seller is man, you got a great home. Why would you even want to sell this thing? Because you it's, it's psychology, right? Like now, instead of you selling them on why they should sell, it puts them in the driver's seat. Now they're selling you on why they need to sell their home, right? So I think that's a great question when you meet with someone like, hey, thanks for inviting me into your home or thanks for meeting me on Zoom. It sounds like you have a great home. Why would you even want to sell this home, right? Why not keep it? And then just stay quiet and let them talk, right? And do more listening. So it's like, you got to ask the right questions so you can get the answers that you need. And then you can find your, your angles from there. Um, we got Kenny on the line. Kenny, thank you, bro, for showing up. I know you're a busy man, bro, so I'm going to uh, call on you real quick. We're talking about listings um, and how to get more listings. Uh, Emmanuel posed the question that he wants to start focusing on more listings. He's been mainly dealing with buyers. So a lot of us are getting listings from our sphere, but what's some other ways that you're generating listings, Kenny? Um, a lot of my listings this year actually just came from other agent referrals from out of the area and I mean, without, you know, diving in the whole session about social media, but a lot, a lot of my business, a lot of my direct business that I actually touch, at least touch a little bit is mostly from, um, from social. So staying engaged with other agents, you know, I'm, some people on this call, I'm kind of like working with, um, like you, Enrique or Jordan, like if I adding value, right. But really high level value, because you guys hopefully are all top producers or on your way to being top producer. So it's not just, I'll oh, check this out. It's like, you know, I went to the chat black event. I came back with page of notes. I immediately hit everyone up who wins this page of notes. And I sent people, Hey, I think you check this out. And, it, and then it's kind of like, uh, when you're working with a, like a client, right. You got to follow up. Oh, then I just got some Tom Ferry, uh, team plus retreat notes. I didn't go there, but Andy Nazaroff, uh, in Fresno, I'm actually going to see him uh, today. Um, send me the notes. I immediately hit all my top producers up uh, in other markets. Like so, like that list of people I had from last time, I sent it again. So like every time I have something, 
uh, that I think a high level agent, because uh, then they're usually ones with the listings, I, I think, at least if I, if I had a finite amount of time, that's who I talk to. So every time I find a nugget or something really, really good, I immediately hit all my people up. So build up your people that you know are influential and has a lot of business in other markets. Uh, like we got two big buyers and sellers this week, uh, for one from Dallas and one, uh, Brendan Close in Seattle has been sending me a lot of business. Um, another East P agent, um, Jesse Dow has sent me a oh, San Jose listing, a condo, like a 500 grand condo. I was hoping East P I couldn't find her name, but yeah, just so it's like really engaging on social, but be um, strategic about it. So talk to people, you know, how, that's all on business and see how you can help them. Cause when they're big producers, you know, there's not, there's very, I mean, so if I send you something, uh, if I send Enrique something or learn something, they hopefully should send to you and then you can use that to send to them. So like, this is all being like super, uh, super collaborative. There we go. Now I like that. That's like outside the box too, right? It's like, instead of going after the client directly, you're going after the people who have clients that can refer you, you know, that can refer them over to you. Right. And, um, yeah, if any of you guys follow Kenny, which I, you guys should all be following him. If you're not, um, just look at his Instagram and he's posting like a ton of value, a lot of funny stuff too, but um, a lot of valuable give you, stuff. Um, like, give you the, an example too. Let me uh, block off something real quick. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, let me go a little further. Actually, that's fine. Um, and more recently, in the last two months, I started doing, I tracked my leads, uh, well, uh, my referrals. So I, I don't have a program yet, but I'm planning to, but I track uh, who gave me a referral how much it was, where it was, and which agent I gave it to on my on my, um, on my team. Um, so eventually, I like to get like make sure these are my eight. Like you know, you have your top sellers and past clients, right? Well, I were mostly more so agents, so I track every single gave me referral within the last like sixty days. I've already gotten thirty two million dollars referral, which is insane. So you think about like I I spend my time. Uh, I treat my agent agents out there like my past clients, and that's where I spend most of my time. Uh, so once I have a program up, you know, I, um, Charles Valesco in Sacramento farms a shit out of me every freaking week, like this postcard and then and I, I'm tossing it out nonstop, but I, like I, I told him, dude, you, you mail me a lot, but it's my friend. So why not? And we, we exchange business. So ideally that's kind of the program I'd like to be on to be able to start farming, uh, all these other agents and adding, again, adding value, maybe put a pop on the newsletter that I recently started, um, it is ESP branded. I actually ran it through compliance first, but I'm trying to like do a, uh, an email, that I'll pop it in here that has like all value add on talking about the industry or best tips of the week for, for so my content uh, that I'm going to be starting mailing out. It's not, not really for consumers it's for agents. And that's because the agents are the ones that are going to give me uh, more business. There we go. So provide value guys. That's the big thing I'm taking right. Um, from, from what Kenny's saying is make sure you're providing value to other influential people. Um, let's, let's talk about that, right? Who are influential people that can send you referrals? You know, um, actually we had a con, we had an assignment this week that was due that we were supposed to go out and talk to someone and remind them that you're in business. Did, did anybody do that? Jose, who'd you talk to, bro? Yeah. Seven. I talked to the, to the lady that cuts my hair. Um, you know, I've been going there for a while, like, Hey, you know, you know, I'm in real estate. So if you have anyone in here that is, you know, looking to buy or sell or has any questions, we're happy to help. And, um, same thing. And I told, I go, anyone I talk to here in the area, I tell them to come, come to you for a haircut. So that's why I reach out to. There we go. There we go. So, so let, yeah, like influential people, right? Like Kenny was saying, they can be agents, right? Like top producing agents They're They know a lot of people. It could be your CPA. It could be, you know, the person that does your dry cleaning, like someone who, you know, is in touch with people on a daily basis. Like those are the people we, we got to get in front of. Um, I like that strategy though, of just sending out a newsletter with valuable content to other agents in, in your area. Anything else, Kenny, that you can add? What's uh, besides agent to agent referrals, uh, we see you killing it on that. Is there any other lead source where you're getting, uh, listings from, or that you see that's working for maybe other agents. It sucks, but these online websites, <clears throat> upnets.com is, is a discount site, but you know, we get a pretty continuous, uh, pretty steady, uh, inflow of stuff every day. Um, try to, uh, home light, home light gives home light has like an elite program locally. Brett Jennings is on it. I'm on it. 
I think like 50 agents in the US is on it, but that doesn't mean you can't get sort of some random leads from time to time. So your home line profile should be updated and they can get you signed up on that. Some other sites consider as like fast expert. Um, we've been randomly getting like, like we had two listing appointments last week from Off City. Off City is really like, like they send you stuff all over the place. Like we, you know, we're, we're based out of East Bay. My, my agent was in like the Marin, Marin County a couple of times and San Jose and Re like all over the place. But that's also a reliable source of leads. Um, Ojo. And, you know, you can pass on the pass on the buyers or something, but there, there's the art listing that comes in um, naturally. Uh, open, and we're, we're now doing open house again. Here's a quick open house strategy that my coach, uh, my coach taught me. I think some guy named Bob Lucida was a number one KW agent for many years. This is, I think, it's before my time. <clears throat> but now on weekends, we're doing six-hour shifts. We're starting off, and we hired a runner for our team, but that's separate. I think we're doing open houses now for maybe 11 to 5, and then our, our long-term vision of what open house will look like is we have shifts, and people will play uh, musical chairs. So, you know, when you're meeting a client there, um, like, oh, great. I love, yeah, I know, I know you're not ready to sell, but I'd love to come over later. We have some time just to maybe give you some feedback on your home. Uh, and talk about some updates you can do in the future if you do decide sale, but like the timing is all bad, right? No one wants to wait till 5 p.m. and they're out doing other stuff. But if you had chefs or even two people, you know, great. Well, my partner's coming and filling for me at one o'clock, two o'clock. Well, I can come over 15 minutes as I work for you. So it's very like non-aggressive, you know? So th those are some things that we're, we're trying out. Um, other than that, many buyers are sellers. This is, I mean, this, this sounds really amateur, but ask the person that they need to sell before they need to buy or they're buying and selling. Like a lot of our, you know, we're a Zillow Flex partner, uh, but many of our brand new agents with zero experience are getting a lot of listings because the buyers do need to sell. Um, sometimes they're not even using the same agent. We, we, we're doing three deals right now where we're not representing the buyer. They're working with an agent, they're happy with them, but for some reason they reached out to us uh, for whatever it is. So those are probably my three tips right now that right now that's working for us pretty well. Um, maybe put a QR code on your postcards. We swapped out our little cute little icon. Now put, put, put a QR code on there. Right now, it's just going to our Zillow site uh, or, uh, or your high note pitch deck, but you got to start getting stuff out there. Um, another that we have was put a rider on your listing. If you're using high note, if you go to bit.ly, well, I should actually get a URL, bit.ly slash sell your home faster. It's our kind of uh, automatic proposal for UpNest and our um, the slide deck we send to all sellers. So I'd like to get like a maybe cool URL, sellyourhomefast.com or sellyourhomefaster.com something and pop down the riders or, or a QR code. So everyone walking past, would be, you would get it. One thing about like working with sellers that I've learned is you, you don't want to just get a call from seller if they've done very little research on you because then you're using that hour, you're with them to convert them. But if you can get as much information about yourself as possible, out there, they get they, you. You have an advantage because they, they get that extra rapport and a couple hours with you. If you guys go on my Zillow page, um, it, it literally just has like you know mark a proposal right there. I'm sure many sellers click it, read it, and like you know what this guy looks interesting. Let me give him a call. Versus you, you just trying to win with zero rapport. You're just you know you're trying to pitch. You're trying to pitch as fast as possible to a person an hour, and you're you have a lot to offer. It actually hurts you because they're, they're like Dude, this is so much information. Uh, let me call the next guy, and then like. And then they, they, they might get the gist of it where people understand photography and uh, matter poor and all that. But the next guy, the, the next guy or woman builds better rapport. Oh yeah, that person last said too. Okay, then I'm not talking about that. So then you're, you're at the disadvantage. So um, the further along you can get the behind getting in front of a seller and giving them information, I think it's better. And this is you know the power of social media and the online reviews. Awesome, man. I took like 20 things down. I got to write them down now. Um, <laughs> I think one of the, the big ones, right, is, is making sure you're getting your information to the seller before you go out there, right? So whether it's on your Zillow profile, whether it's on your website, whether you're sending them something up front, I know we send a pre-listing email that has links to our reviews, it has a video testimonial, it has, you know, how we market homes or websites. So we want to send that out to the clients before, this way when you get there, you're spending more time on the appointment building rapport and connecting with them versus having to explain everything you're going to do, right? Like that should already be kind of done up front before you go out there and spend more time building rapport. Cause what I, I mean, what I have found in Kenny, I mean, I don't know if you agree, but when you meet with sellers, a lot of sellers like say, Oh yeah, the other guy's doing that too. The other guy's doing that too. Like, Oh yeah, you're doing photos or yeah, you're doing Matterport. Like if you really think about it, most, you know, decent agents, are doing a similar type of marketing. Everyone's doing staging, right? Everyone's doing your, or virtual staging or what have you. 
but the really the difference is going to be the actual agent, the connection. Uh, does the is the client um, confident that you can get them the most money for their property? Um, People so, want reach, like reach. So like, yeah, everyone does everything the same. So like, the pitch like for us is, um, I mean, I learned this all the way from client days. This is like six year old stuff. Like, you know, our, our, the the power of our team, including many of you guys, our team is a social media reach and your network. Yeah, right now there's, I, mean, I know there is now, but. You know, fast last year, like there's no open houses. You know, like, people are only looking online. Now everyone's getting the word out on the streets about your property. If you're working with us, we have a lot more people, and we sh we have, I'll share other people's listing. You know, like even like Enrique, uh, you have something, or I, I shared I shared Jordan Mott's listing in San Jose, and Herman H Chan saw it, and he brought in the buyer off market. And think about that. So that that's one situation where I promote in their property and help people. But her, uh, Jordan Mott sends me referrals because I, I literally help him get a wholesale. So. Like your social media reach is one thing, your your influence and network, and also um, many of you guys are on top agent network. Is is that sounds a? Yeah. Yeah. So top agent network. Yeah. Well, we we have top agent network. Um, <clears throat> top ten percent of the county has it, so I can get your listing in front of other agents uh, before they um, can see it on MLS. Um, and then, you know, we, we use Slack. I think some of you guys are on our Slack, so we have off market channel for Slack, so we can get in front of agents. The whole point is like we can get you extra. In, the, in this market is a little different, but in the regular market, all that extra exposure means a lot, right? And then, oh yeah, we have a large team and if you, you know, most of you or can find someone to do it. Well, we can also door knock the neighborhood and let people know ahead of time about their listing. So these are some of the things that uh, agent A, that's a top producer for many years is not willing to do. And because they're so busy, that's so much business. We're, we're willing right now. I want to win over your business and win over your neighbor's business. You know, we're newer and we understand that we don't have that much market share, as much experience, but we're, we're a harder worker and we want to you know, work with you. So like enthusiasm wins a lot of um, uh, enthusiasm wins a lot over top agents. And uh, I, uh, commenting on like the reach, I've actually worked that into my proposal on the buyer side too, because it benefits both sides of the coin, right? Both consumers is the fact that we have a lot of agents on our team and we have a lot of uh, uh, resources to use as a network to bring the most opportunity to our buyer or our seller. So definitely pitch reach like wide reach yeah both sides and i think it's one it's one thing about telling someone but also showing them as well right so if you can back that up with showing them something or you know pulling something up on your phone like just simply pulling up slack and saying like look these are all the agents on my slack right now these guys all have their own buyers you know collectively we have this many you know followers on social media um and be able to show them you know something in, in person i think that's also effective here's one we use pretty uh pretty often you know well you guys follow me on instagram hey i'm interviewing for this uh, three bedroom townhome today in this neighborhood you know let me know if you have a buyer uh we're you know uh whatever and leave it at that and then by the, by the time you get an appointment you might have three or four people hey i want to know what that is so then you go back or i mean if you're if you if you're a company if you, you should know your own social media right so yeah. like hey they're like this person wants to see your property even before i got here i got people wanting to see it they don't, yeah, the market's crazy, whatever, but you're showing them that. So that's pretty, that's, I think that's pretty powerful to leverage what you have. Or your office. There's people in hey, I'm interviewing yeah. today for this. And I got four, four of my team members want to see it already. You know, let me know it's a good time. Hey guys, and those of us that are on a team, that's actually a good strategy, right? Like on the way to my listing appointment, I'm going to like do a video and you guys are going to send me a DM saying, hey, I actually have a buyer looking in that area. Let me know the details of that property. Like, that's a that's an easy way, right? To now show up to the listing appointment and be like, "Hey, look what happened on the way over here," right? Um, Smart. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use that. <laughs> uh, cool, cool, cool. Let's talk more listings, guys. This is this is all good stuff. I'm getting a lot of ideas. Hopefully, you're getting some down. Write the you know the one or two things that really stand out for you, and and implement those in your business. There's a ton of stuff. Don't think you're gonna do it all overnight, but. There's one or two little nuggets that's like, all right, that's that's an easy implementation that I can start doing. Um, let's talk more more uh, more listings. Any other ways you guys have gotten listings or you've seen other agents get listings? Hey, uh, Enrique. So I, I listened to one of uh, Tom Ferry's uh, podcasts this morning and they were saying, just put it on social on your story, offer free CMAs to your sphere. Just put it out like, hey, who wants to know the current value of their home? And basically, that's how um, a few of his agents have been like farming and stuff like that. So I, I'm going to try that out today. There we go. Let's do that. Um, 
that's a good challenge guys for all of us today. Like, let's just put that on your story. Uh, any of my friends or family want to know the value of their home. Um, shoot me a DM with your address and I'll send you back, you know, the estimated value or what your home could probably sell for in this market and how the activity is in your neighborhood. Um, I think if we all just did that, I guarantee you someone's going to get a listing lead from that. Right. How many people we got right now in, in this, hey, we got 18 people on this call right now. So if everyone does that and puts it out there next week, let's see like, all right, who actually got something from that? You guys down for that? Dude. Um, okay. Anything else? Let's talk, talk more listings. How we get listings. Um, what about what uh, have any of you guys had success with dealing with like probate attorneys or anything like that or divorce attorneys to to get listings referrals. Um, okay. I have one because um, my my girlfriend works for a bankruptcy attorney in San Jose He's one of the biggest he has one of the biggest firms in San Jose, but he works of course they have their their go-to guy right so he's been working with this guy his whole career so i kind of if anyone has had experience with that how do i like kind of you know sneak my way in there and kind of have an opportunity to to earn his business if anyone could share like that could be pertaining to anyone that i, you know, I have a tip uh, we 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 just didn't execute it uh, ava.com just send you guys that maybe have virtual assistants pull a list and put them all on the spreadsheet um, but I would suggest to get in, get in with a divorce attorney, maybe say, try to, uh, talk to them about how you can send them business versus everyone's trying to show them, Hey, let me get your, you know, let me get your divorcees. Hey, if I have a divorcee, like what would it be, look like to work with you? And I think that will at least get you on a zoom call or door and really, really build, you know, build that rapport after that is kind of, you got to figure that out. Okay. So like a two-stepper, like not focus on earning their business up front, but see how you like their process is and how it's like a lender, right? You guys all get calls from lenders. Yeah. Just to treat yourself as the lender and that person as the agent, what would that look like? Yeah. Yeah. And that's funny, right? Like I get hit up all the time from title off title, uh, escrow officers, lenders, and they, you know, they want to, they want me to send them business. And I go like, Hey, like, are you going to send me some business? Like my escrow officer, right. They want to book an appointment with me. I go, look, when you're going to sell your home, like you, you're the, the sales rep, what agent is going to sell your home? right? Like, how do I become that agent? Would you sell your home with me? And then they're like, uh, they all stay quiet. Right. But like, like Kenny just said, right. Instead of like trying to take from someone, like come to them and give them someone, even if it doesn't turn into business, but just the fact that you sent them a referral, um, I think that's your foot in the door. And then you build the relationship from there and then, you know, you can expand on it, but it's just leading with the give first, right? What's the, um, what's Gary V's, you know, philosophy, the jab, 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 right hook, right? You give three times before you ask for something, right? So um, it's, it's just the mindset shift, guys. Let's, let's focus on giving and, in re you know, you're going to receive in return. And Kenny's, Kenny's the perfect example. Like he's giving, giving, giving. That's his whole strategy is give more information than any other agent out there, Um more entertainment, more information, more any of that, right? Like he's just giving, right? And then in turn, you're going to call him, right? Because you're, it's, 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 he's created that mind share with you. So it's, it's just a little mindset shift. I like that. Um, all right. What other questions, guys? We've got about 10 minutes left. So we can stay on this topic or is there any other topics right now? Uh, we have Kenny on the call. So he has a wealth of knowledge. So any other things right now that you want to discuss or something in your business or a pointer that you need? Now's the time. All right, I'm going to call on you if you don't talk. <laughs> hey, what's up, Enrique? What's up, brother? Hey, I, I just wanted to throw this out there uh, from a lender's aspect. Um, one of the tools that we use, uh, where I use with my partners is I have, I make a, uh, an app that's like a lead capture app that you guys can use on social media that uh, is out there for people to want to get a free evaluation of what their home is worth. So that's something that uh, I normally do and I co-market with them and uh, they're able to post that up to all their social media and, and, and even, you know, do some uh, boosting on it if they want to. 
and people jump on there and we'll fill it all out and they'll get that inf information instantly. So that's, that's one way you can do to lead capture some of the homes that are looking to just find out what their value is. And then yeah. if they're finding out what their value is, they're probably looking to sell. <laughs> yeah. And if they're looking to sell, then they're going to be looking to buy, right? And they're going to probably need a loan. So, um, yep. Steve, I would say if you have that, uh, if you have a link or anything, you could drop it or send it to me and we'll distribute it. And if you guys use that and you're able to, you know, capture some clients, then, you know, think of Steve for, for the financing side of it. Yeah, you know, and it's just like I said, we're all trying to help each other out. You know, I know, um, uh, I can't think of his name now. <laughs> I'm, I'm going blank right now. It's been a, a busy morning. But uh, Jason, uh, yeah. Jason, go, you know, know each other very well. So and I know you guys do a great job there. My job is, like I said, to just offer different things that maybe they might not have and work together. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, good stuff, man. Thanks for sharing that. That's that's definitely a good tool um, to capture leads. Anybody else, guys? What's something else pressing right now? A comment or something you can contribute, or some some area of your business that you know you need some pointers on? How how would you deal with the seller that's still like terrified of like COVID, even though things are like starting to ease up? now you know i was because we're, we're i have a few nurturers right now that they're still waiting for covid to end but they're all vaccinated you know everything is coming kind of coming back to normal open houses are back i kind of pressed on that that you know now is a good opportunity to put your house on the market because there's more buyers out there now um but how would you handle that like without sounding like you have commission bro <laughs> what do you guys think who has some well, some pointers for Daniel. How would you handle it, Jordan? You got a seller who's scared to put their home on the market because of COVID. Um, I would say, um, let me rent you an Airbnb for a month. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you know, again, be sensitive to that they're dealing with, but also um, kind of reiterate the financial potential and really see their motivation. You know, just like we did talk about objection handling, understand why they're, everyone feels differently about COVID, right? To different degrees, but, and respect that, acknowledge it. Um, don't just scoff at it, but also let them know. Quicker we do this, the quicker you can move on to the next thing and then control your environment in a much safer, better way and you're going to be financially more stable the longer we keep one room that is off limits and let the rest of the house be shipped to it but also reiterate the fact that the quicker that it goes to market the quicker it sells the quicker they can move on and they can go isolate somewhere else yeah i think um you cut out for a minute um for me but i i think the main thing he was saying was you got to be sensitive to the issue because everyone feels different about covid and you have to find out what their motivation is right because if someone's motivated you know, if, if it's just more like, yeah, I think it's a good time to sell and there's not really a huge motivation, you know, then they're going to have all these obstacles and all these, you know, reasons on why they can't make the move. But when someone's extremely motivated, like we've seen it, like they're going to do what they got to do. Like we've had sellers who moved out, who lived out of one room, who packed their stuff in one week, you know, because they were motivated. You know, I had a, I had a seller one time that uh, we were talking to. He was going to get a job transfer to, um, to Austin, Texas, and he was waiting to hear back, right? And he's like, look, once I hear back, I'll let you know. Like a week or two later, he's like, I just moved back and I got I to gotta sell this house in 30 days, right? And now, like, he was super motivated. He's like, what do we got to do? So, like, I came out to his house that same day. We signed the listing agreement. He literally packed his whole house in three days, got everything into a, 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 a pod, and they lived out of one room, um, and we made this. We made the sale happen. A week later, we were in contract. But like when someone's motivated, guys, they're gonna do what it takes to make it happen, right? So it could be Emmanuel that you don't have someone who's extremely motivated, um, or their motivation isn't high enough to get past the COVID issue, right? Um, so 
I think you got to just be sensitive to that. I think you got to ask more questions and focus more on why they're selling and where they're going and what the end result is going to be and give them some options. And then at the end of the day, it's really going to be up to them if they're willing to do what they need to do. Yeah. Are you going to say something, Jay? Yeah, no, I think it's also important to find out what about COVID is holding them back, right? And then creating a solution around what their concern is. Because there could be a handful of different concerns. And a lot of times we, we're, we're kind of thinking of, of a concern of our own versus we got to understand what their actual concern is and just providing that solution for them. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Any other questions, guys? Let's take one more, then we're going to wrap up. What's the next step for your business right now? What's the, what's the next thing you got to focus on right now to take your business to the next level? Who wants to be vulnerable and share? Well, for me, as I'm, you know, starting out to, um, I still haven't taken my, my state test to get licensed yet, but I need to figure out who or what team is going to provide me with the best and uh, most helpful information because I've been hanging out with one team for the last couple of months, but I'm kind of unfortunately realizing that I don't know if they're going to really be able to um, set me up for success in this business. So right now I'm kind of wanting to like interview, talk to other teams and stuff um, because I really need that like hand holding right now, j even like shadowing just to see how to talk to people, what the lingo is like. Cause I feel I feel really lost right now. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm, I'm learning a lot with like the schooling part of it, but like, as far as like tagging along with someone is where I'm really struggling with. So that's the next step in my business. I need to find who, who's going to help me. <laughs> who can give you're, us some coaching? Are you in Brentwood? Brentwood, Antioch? I'm in Brentwood. Mm-hmm. Give, let's give her some pointers, guys. As a new agent, you know, what should she be looking for in a team? Um, some of you guys are on, you know, on team. Some of you guys are independent. Um, I, I can kind of on that because I had a similar conversation with an agent that came to our office. It was Brian's friend that came in and he was talking about, you know, what are the benefits of joining a brokerage versus like uh, or a bigger brokerage versus like a boutique or a team versus just working under a single agent. And I, I've come from an independent uh, agent background. I worked with one agent before and I've, I now work with a big team. And I think the only thing that I wish that I would have done was not focus on what they can provide in terms of um, like knowledge because you know, most brokerages that do a good amount of business, they have that knowledge already, right? So if everything is the same, you want to focus on something that could vary, which is opportunity that they can bring to you, right? And you can only get opportunity as a newer agent if they have a lot of business to, to, hand, to hand over to you, right? Mm -hmm. and they can handhold you through that process, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. um, when I was working at Keller Williams, of course, there was a lot, a lot of heavy hitters in the, in the area, but they did not have enough business to hand to me right? Or, or did they didn't need help at that time, right? So when I joined uh, PRG, they had a, a good mix of like the knowledge and the tools and systems in place, but they also had uh, a good amount of uh, new business that they can hand over to me. And in turn, when I did need that help, I had other people that I can lean on throughout that process and um, work in a very collaborative space where everyone works together in the office where you can hear conversations happening, negotiations happening, watch yeah. write up contracts and things like that, right? Um, I think what I wish I didn't do was focus like on the splits and more focus on the experience. You know, I don't know if that was helpful, but. Yeah, you, I'm sorry catch the last part you said to not to focus on the split and to and not not necessarily the tools because the tools are it's like it's like a shiny shiny object you know like the yeah CRMs and you know the different um ad venues and and marketing like signs and stuff like that everyone yeah. can do that it all comes down to money right yeah. um like budgeting they have allocated towards that the the thing you want to focus on is who in like my generation saying like who can put you on you know like who yeah. can like put you in that that right place to receive that opportunity. And once that opportunity is given to you, who can walk you through that process and not just forget about you, right? Yeah. yeah. 
and in a collaborative sense, right? So yeah, definitely. Thank you. Good stuff, Emmanuel. I'm a little biased to Emmanuel because he's on our team, but um, <laughs> this is not a commercial for me or for Kenny's team or anything. But I'm just gonna take my team uh, leader hat off and just speak to you as as a, an agent. Is what I see that most agents fail because number one is they don't have the structure and accountability. They don't have something consistent that they're doing every single day. Um, a lot of people get into real estate thinking like I'm self-employed, I can set my own schedule, I can do that. But if you look at any top producer, if you look at Kenny's calendar, his calendar is booked back to back to back to back all day. He is on 24 um, seven and that becomes his lifestyle, right? Uh, of course, you, you know, you want to take vacations here and there and reward yourself, but you need to have some structure and some accountability. And as a brand new agent, uh, if you're not disciplined or you got to have some self-awareness, if you know you're not disciplined to work from home or whatever, you need to have a place where you're going to go to and people are doing the same thing you're supposed to be doing. Everyone's calling like that's the environment that, that we create uh, and it works really well, especially for newer agents. Um, so structure and accountability is the biggest one. The other thing is mastering your skills. Like you could go knock on a thousand doors, but if you don't know what to say or you don't know how to say it, or you don't know how to position yourself as a leader or as, you know, uh, someone of value, then you're just knocking on doors and your, your knuckles are going to bleed, right? Like the better you can be at the skills and knowing how to handle objections and knowing, you know, the scripts and all that, the more efficient you're going to be. And you're going to have to talk to a lot less people to get a potential client. So I would say structure and accountability and working on your skill set, those are like the two big ones. The third one, and I made a video about this that, that I put out and I'll, sh I'll share it with you, Christian, um, on okay. Instagram. The last one is really gonna be like Emmanuel was saying is going somewhere where there's opportunity. Um, right now, if you're starting off brand new, nobody knows you as the real estate expert yet. Your mm -hmm. friends, your family, they know you as whoever you've been you know, prior to this, right? So it's going to take some time uh, before your cousin or your aunt is confident in selling her home with you, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you're going to build that, right? Through social media and through being consistent and letting them see what you're doing. Eventually, they'll be like, okay, I, I can trust you with my business. But in the meantime, you're going to need to go somewhere where there's leads, right? Where there's people that have raised their hand and say, hey, I'm thinking of buying or selling. And you can immediately call them and you can book an appointment and you can turn that into a potential deal and maybe someone on the team can help you close that deal, All right? So it's those three things that, you know, flat out, doesn't matter what team you go to, doesn't matter what brokerage you go to, make sure you're getting some structure, make sure you're mastering your skills and make sure there's opportunity waiting for you that you can take advantage of. And there's one thing I wanna to add too is the best teacher in the real estate game is failing, right? So if you can fail, um, way faster and more times the more experienced that you're going to be right so if you're by yourself and you only have say like 30 contacts that you can call on and you can fail 30 times you're gonna you're gonna learn at that pace but if you're in a brokerage with opportunity that can constantly give you 30 different people to fail every single day mm -hmm. you're just gonna grow much faster that way right Got and it, yeah. from your own failures but learning from our failures as well because it's not always perfect right and we lose offers every day. We lose clients every day. We, you know, so, so the faster that you can learn how to fail and how to deal with that, the, the, the more faster you're going to learn. Awesome. Thank there you guys. Go. The X factor. Yeah. Guys, one last thing. One last thing. I think the other part too is finding a group that you're comfortable with someone you enjoy doing work with, right? Mm -hmm. Because it makes it so much funner, right? Let, let's yeah. just keep everything the same. You're going to close deals. You're going to make money but then finding that group that's going to inspire you to make you excited to come into the office. That to me is huge because if we're going to yeah. be doing this 50 hours a week, I'm going to want to do it with the group of people that I enjoy hanging out with. Right. Yeah. And enjoy winning with. So that's definitely the culture is going to be huge. Yeah. That's exactly the last thing I was going to say is this the culture. That's the X factor, right? Is every group that you join or every brokerage has a different culture when you join a big brokerage and you're just kind of by yourself, there's not really a culture, right? Like there's going to be little mini cultures, depending if there's little teams or little cliques. But when you join a team, that team has a specific culture of how they do business. Do you guys laugh at the same jokes? Do you guys dress the same? Do you guys like the similar type of music? Like those are things that 
that you want to go somewhere where you're comfortable every day and you can show up motivated and inspired. Um, and culture attracts more of the same culture, right? So like Kenny's team has a, a, a great culture. Our team mm -hmm. has a great culture and we usually attract people who vibe with us and, and are on that same kind of wavelength. So, you yeah. know, interview teams, spend the day with them, go to different ones and then, you know, see what you like at the end of the day. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. No problem. I think that's it, guys. That's our time. Thank you for showing up to the Real Estate Growth Academy. I hope you guys got some value out of this. If any of you guys need anything offline, feel free to reach out to any of us. Uh, make sure you're following everybody on uh, social media. And like I said, guys, take what you learned today and go out and apply it to your business. Um, pay it forward, pass it on. Like that's what this group is all about. It's all about collaboration, motivation, inspiration, and just helping each other out. So let me know if you guys need anything, hit me up and we will see you next week, next Wednesday, uh, same time, same place. Awesome. Thank you guys. Let's go. Thanks, Eureka. Get it.